Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Maximum Automation. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can integrate Allure reports with your Cucumber framework. Allure is another test report tool that shows a very concise representation of your test execution. So let's get started. This is my project Cucumber Test NG where I have implemented the Cucumber using TestNG as a test framework. Now we'll see how we can integrate LEO reports to generate the feature file execution results using Cucumber. First of all, we need to add the dependency in our project for LEO report. So I'll go to the browser and then I'll search for Maven repository. And then click on this mavenrepository.com. To get the dependency XML for LEO report, here you can type LEO Cucumber 7 and then click on search. Now, here we get the LEO Cucumber 7 JVM plugin, which is used to generate the LEO reports for Cucumber test results. The reason why I have looked for Cucumber 7 is because if I go back to my project, then in the pom.xml file, you can see that the version of Cucumber which I'm using is 7. And based on the version of Cucumber you are using, we need to look for the same version of LEO report plugin. In case you are using an older version, like Cucumber 6, then you can type 6 here instead of 7. And then you can get the dependency XML for earlier Cucumber 6 JVM. Similarly, you can look for other compatible versions of earlier plugin based on the Cucumber version. Now, because I'm using version 7 of Cucumber, so I'll go with earlier Cucumber 7. Here, click on the latest version available. And then copy the dependency XML for earlier Cucumber JVM plugin. Now let's move back to the project. And paste the dependency XML over here. Now the next thing which we need to do is Go to the test runner class. Then here in Cucumber options, I'll add another attribute for plugin. And then provide the value for the plugin as pretty, comma, io dot. QA meta dot Elior dot Cucumber seven JVM dot Elior Cucumber seven JVM. So here you can see that I have given the Cucumber seven in plugin name because we have added the dependency for Cucumber seven JVM. In case you are using Cucumber 6, then you have to update 6 here instead of 7. And here also, you need to update the version number based on the version of Cucumber you are using. So that's it we need to do from configuration standpoint. Now to get the LEO results in Cucumber format, we need our test to be written in the form of a Cucumber feature file. Here, under the test cases folder, I have my test scenarios written using Cucumber feature file. This is the test scenario which I'm going to execute. This will search for a book on Amazon and will compare the price of the book. Currently, this test should fail because I intentionally want it to fail. 
to show you how we can analyze the failed result. Now we are ready to run the test and we'll get the test results output in earlier format. So let me run the test. You can see that the execution has started. Once the execution is done, then we'll get our LEO results in default or specified directory. And then using those LEO JSON files, we can generate our LEO report. So the execution is done. We can see here that one test case got executed and the status of the test case is failed. Now, when we execute our test, then the LEO results will be generated at the root level of the project, which is the default location of LEO results. And here, if I refresh the project explorer, then you can see that we have got a new folder here as LEO results. And if I expand this folder, then we can see these are the LEO results files generated in JSON format. And using these LEO JSON files, we can generate our LEO HTML report. So for that, let me first open this folder in File Explorer. Here is our LEO results folder, and these are the test results file. Now to generate the LEO HTML report, let me open the command prompt first. After that, we need to type the command as Allure space serve space the folder name where Allure JSON files are placed and then hit enter. You can see it prompted with the message generating report to temp directory. So once the report is done, then it will automatically open in the default browser. Here you can see that we have got our LEO HTML reports. Here in this overview tab, we can see the overview or summary of the test execution and the other details if you have provided while your test execution, like test environment. Then in this view tab, I can see my detailed results. In the test suite, currently I had only one feature file. If I would have executed multiple feature files, then same would have listed here. Then to see the detailed execution results, I can expand this feature, which displays the scenario which I have executed. So only a single scenario got executed. And here, we can see the reason for our test failure. When I expand this, then it shows that the expected amount was this, but the actual amount is this. And here we can get the stack trace of the test failure. So this is how you can generate an LEO report for your Cucumber test. Now I'll show you how you can attach a screenshot in your test result in case of any failure because when our test fails, then the screenshot helps us to understand the state of the application when the test failed, which basically helps us in analyzing whether the test failure was because of an application issue or there is something wrong with the test script. So let's see how we can attach a screenshot when the test fails. And for that, I'll move to the step definition file where I have the cucumber annotation at after is placed. So if I scroll this file, then you can see that I have this after annotation available here, which is currently being used to quit web driver object at the end of each scenario. This after method executes after each test scenario. So if I have three test scenarios, then this method will be called three times 
at the end of each scenario. Now to attach a screenshot, first I need to verify whether my test scenario has failed or passed. And to get the status of the test scenario, I can add the scenario object in the parameter. This scenario is available under io.cucumber.java. After that, let me add an if condition here to verify if the test status is pass or fail. So using this scenario object, I can call the method is failed, which returns true if my scenario is failed. And when it fails, then I'll attach a screenshot in my Allure results by using Allure dot add attachment method which takes two inputs first is the step name and second is the byte array of our screenshot image so first i'll provide the step name as failed screenshot and then i can type new byte array input stream which will return the byte array input stream object now we need to pass the byte array of our image in this constructor and to get the byte array let's first take the screenshot of the browser to get the screenshot i can type string screenshot equals takes screenshot I'll cast the driver and then I can use the method get a screenshot as and then I have to provide the output type of the screenshot so I can either get the output in the form of base 64 string bytes or in file format here in our case we need the screenshot in the form of a byte array let's change the type of screenshot variable to byte array instead of string after that pass this screenshot byte array in byte array input stream So that's all we need to do. Now we'll get this screenshot as well in our LEO report whenever there is a failed test. So let me run the test again to see how we'll get this screenshot attached with the failed test. You can see that the execution has started. Once the execution is done, then we'll get our LEO results in the same folder. And then again, using those LEO JSON files, we can generate our LEO report. And this time with the result JSON file, we'll get the screenshot file as well. So the execution is done. Now, if I refresh this folder, then you can see we have got new files generated under this folder. So again, I'll open the command prompt and we'll type Allure space serve and the folder name where Allure results files are placed. You can see here we have got the latest results. And if I go to the detailed result of my test execution, then you can see that my test case is failed because of this reason. And here I have got the tear down node, which contains the screenshot of the application. I can click on this to zoom in the screenshot. And then 
we can verify whether the test failure is because of an application issue or invalid test script. So we have seen how we can attach a screenshot with the failed test. Now, most of you might be wondering how I'm generating the results using the Allure command and how to make sure that this Allure command will work on your system as well. So I have already covered how to install the Allure framework on your system. But in case you have not seen my previous video, then you can follow the next step to configure the Allure on your machine. To integrate Allure reports with our test framework, first of all, we need to install or download the Allure framework on our machine. And to download it, you can search for, you can search for Allure reports. And then open this web page, docs.qmeta.io. Here they have provided a detailed documentation to show how to configure the Allure framework on your machine. And then how you can generate Allure reports for different kinds of test framework. If I click here, then we can see the steps to do the Allure installation. If your operating system is Linux, then you can perform below steps to install it. If it's Mac, then this is the command to install Allure with the help of Homebrew. And for Windows, you can use the command scoop install Allure with the help of scoop. Apart from these command line installations, you can also install the Allure manually. And for this, first we need to download the zip file from this link. Once downloaded, then we can unpack the zip file where we need to navigate to the bin folder, which contains the allure.patch file. And then we need to set the path of allure.patch file in environment variables. So first let's click on here. And then we can click on the latest version of allure. After that, click on the zip file to download the allure setup. You can download the other file formats based on your requirement. And then you can unpack to get the allure.bat file. So the download is complete. Now let's open this in File Explorer to unpack it. Here you can see that we have this allure 2.19 folder which contains these folders including bin and if i go to the bin folder then we can see that we have allure.bat file available here now let me copy this allure folder from the download location to my workspace once done then go to the allure.bat file and then copy the path of the batch file, which we need to set in the path environment variable. Now let me open the environment variables. Here, I can add a new entry for allure.bat file. Save the changes. Now, to confirm if the path has been set up correctly or not, we can open the command prompt and then type allure hyphen hyphen version. If your path is set up correctly, then it will display the allure version. So we are done with the allure configuration on the window system, LEO reports. That's it for today. I hope you liked the video. Please put your comments in the comment box. Also, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Thank you.